Hello there. Today we have a kind of weird impromptu video because I bought a weird computer impromptu on Craigslist. Because, well, <sighs> look at it. Somebody had to own this thing. Um, and it turned out that someone was me. So <laughs> I picked this up because, well, for one, it's crazy looking. And two, I could tell from the photos that it was a nearly perfect time capsule of a computer from 2004, which is just kind of really cool to see. Now, this was listed as an Alienware for fairly obvious reasons, but it isn't, and it never was. Uh, this case was not used by Alienware ever, as far as I can tell. However, it does turn out to have its own lineage that we will take a look at today. I was all ready to dub this the Failionware because of that, but I respect it a little bit more than that now. But today we're going to be taking a look at this thing because I'm excited to see what it is. There's some really interesting parts inside. But this, I believe, is a Vision Man GS P4 3000 series computer, and we're gonna see if it will fire up today. <laughs> Now, of course, what made me buy this thing is this just utterly ridiculous case. Um, this is why the seller thought this was an Alienware, the obviously alien-inspired design. Uh, it has a door that pokes through there. I have no idea why the punch-outs exist here, because there's no way you could punch out there, which makes me wonder if maybe this is... No, it's not even a different case. It's just weird. There's so much to explore here. Um, but these eyes, they should light up. There's a cable right there to do that. But that's not even the half of what we have going on here. Uh, there's a little door right here. That's some USB ports. Uh, there's some kind of display down there that we're gonna have to see what does when it turns on. But that's just the front of this. Turning it on to the side here, uh, we can see this just gloriously awful window. I love how hideous this thing is. It is just great. Uh, it has these locking tabs here for sliding it off. They don't really seem to work anymore. Uh, and then it opens up to reveal some really interesting stuff. Now, I saw a photo of inside of this before I bought it, so I knew what was going on here. And there's kind of a lot. For one, we can see some what appears to be 2004-era stuff. Um, this is what looks like a Pentium 4-era motherboard. Uh, definitely uh, what seems to be like a 6800 GeForce card right there. I haven't actually confirmed that. I don't know what that is. But this is what really made me want this thing. And, oh, man, it... Oh, that sucks. Let's, let, me, let me get a tight shot of this so I can really show you what this is. And it's really unfortunate that that's just broke because... I'm gonna have to try and repair that and it's gonna be a huge nightmare. This is one of the things that kind of tipped me off that this case was special and that somebody really cared about this computer because that is a Counter-Strike logo cut out of acrylic that has an LED embedded in it so that it'll light up through the side panel when the computer's on. But uh, the LED's legs fell off. The, it's probably had been flexing around there forever and when I moved it around to bring it to the office they fell out. So I'm gonna have to see if I can solder to the LED that's embedded in there. Um, LED cases are made out of acrylic too and if they put that together right it's probably not removable. So uh, I'm gonna have to try and solder to what little bit is left there which is just gonna be horrifying. But uh, we will definitely have to try and get that thing working again. One of the other things that made me just absolutely have to buy this computer is this power supply. Look at it. I, I'm saying that a lot here, but it's just bananas. So we have what appears to be an extruded aluminum chassis, anodized blue with the externally mounted fan. The sleeved power cable coming out of this as well is kind of high end too, and it was not connected to the motherboard when I bought it. I don't know how to read into that. I'm wondering if maybe that was part of removing the hard drive. Unfortunately, this won't boot right now. And on that, we're actually going to have to pull this thing out before we even attempt that because I want to look inside of it because pretty sure this is from 2004 
And that is right smack dab in the middle of the worst part of the capacitor plague. Now, I keep saying I think this thing is from 2004, and that's from the research I did to build my Windows XP uh, 20th anniversary system, which was built spec from 2004. And a lot of this all just seems very familiar to me, um, and especially this uh, high quality cable management job here. Um, how many different splitters are there in here? My gosh, how many power hard drives did they have in this thing? Good grief. Um, uh, also, this power supply has AT power connectors for some reason. It's just so weird. Anyway, this graphics card, I want to see if I can pull this out. I don't know how this case works. Um, this is an AGP graphics card by the looks of it. Um, and I, will it just slide out? This is, this thing is so weird. There's no screw in it, but it's kind of loose. So let me just see. There we go. Um, yeah, like I expected, a Gigabyte card, Gigabyte's kind of thing was the blue PCB. So Gigabyte card, Gigabyte motherboard. Um, is there any indication what this is? There's a Gigabyte part number there. Let me look up what this is real quick. Oh, wow, that whole section is torched from the uh, power there. Uh, and everything looks okay. Uh, there is a speaker on this graphics card. What? Probably beeps when it doesn't get power, but that's still wild. Let me look up what it is. As I thought, per gigabyte.com, this is a GeForce 6800. That was pretty much top spec for 2004. I mean, pretty much it was top spec for 2004. Uh, so you could not do better than that when building a computer and it's passively cooled. I don't think it's, yeah, it is not thermally Conductive anywhere on the back there. Actually, it has a rubber stopper and foam pads. It's just an extra radiator on the back, which is honestly kind of brilliant because your GPU is always in the top slot. So it's just kind of wasted space. But uh, so it's a single slot card ish sort of. But yeah, that's awesome. We need to see what processor that is, though. Okay, from here, we can see a couple of things. The power supply is Powmax brand. Um, I don't, I don't know what that is. Uh, hopefully it's not an ultra brand power supply because those are explodey. But the CPU cooler, I'm a little disappointed that it's the Intel cooler, not a Zalman or something, but that's a little thick there, it seems to me. So I'm wondering if maybe that could be a P4 Extreme because that's kind of what the cooler is that came with those. So I'm going to pop this off because no matter what, we're going to want to refresh the thermal paste on this thing. <laughs> so let's see what uh, this looks like in there. Okay, what secrets await? Look, at this is the nice one though, copper core. Okay, I've got an alcohol wipe here. I'm gonna wipe off the thermal paste and we will both see together for the first time what this thing is. Oh, it's so dry, it's leaking off. Oh my gosh. Um, I can't quite make that out with the angle the light's at. 2004 Pentium 4 SL8U4, uh, 2.8 gigahertz though. All right, so looking it up, that is a P4 511. It is not a uh, extreme model. So that was just a slightly better cooler, I guess, because I really think that the uh, P4s had a much thinner one but we will be putting some newer uh, thermal paste on there. But again, yeah, all the capacitors look good. There's some dirt built up around there, but that all looks fine. So yeah, that's not bad. Uh, what do we got for RAM? We have some Sharpied on um, RAM. We got two different sticks. This one is 256 megabytes. This one is 512. So a whole 768 megabytes of RAM. Um, that's pretty okay for a XP system like this. I wasn't really planning on doing a like restoration video here, but uh, we're so close, you know, I might as well just pull this out and get it cleaned up because I'm seeing the dirt around there and stuff and I'm not super thrilled about that. So we can just take care of that. I know I'm going to get questions about this, so I'll mention this here. I've been experimenting with a different dry cleaning method for stuff here at the office because I don't have running water, but I have an Atrix ESD vacuum here. Um, 
So this is conductive to ground from the tip. Uh, this is a conductive rubber that goes into there and the whole thing is grounded so that uh, it doesn't build up a charge. And then I have uh, a bunch of ESD brushes here. So what I can do is I can vacuum up the dust as I loosen it. So I don't need to like rinse a board or get it wet or anything like that, uh, which makes it easier to clean. Uh, especially when you don't have a sink. So I'm going to be doing that here. Uh, so yeah, just had to explain that before I turn it on because it is a vacuum. It's loud. All right. That is looking dramatically better yeah i really like that solution uh i do think that's worth people looking into but i think next i want to get that power supply out so we can see what's going on with that because uh well, i guess it's not good things there we go i don't want to scratch it up lead man pow max aluminum power supply okay who cares what it's made out of but support intel pentium 4 and amd athlon processors Meets AMD or meets ATX version 2.03 and ATX 12 volt version 1.1 specifications. That is interesting. Um, ultra low noise design. So somebody cared about this thing. Um, taking it apart is going to be interesting. Usually these are designed as like a shell that goes over top of a different one, but because this is made out of like extruded aluminum, uh, we're going to have to take off the back plates and it looks like it might be two separate pieces two half shells that go together but yeah uh, i want to see what the caps inside of this look like before we try applying power to it i really hope we can try and fire this thing up because it's just weird all right so how oh yeah that's what i thought <laughs> so we won't be powering this thing up that's for sure um Yep, it's done the capacitor plague thing. Yeah, that's a ruptured vent on the capacitor. This is a different kind of capacitor failure than leaking. Uh, so this is not considered a leaking capacitor. Uh, the electrolyte dries out and expands here. That's what's going on. So it's actually bursted the vent on top. So this is different from leaking, which I can see on the board. I don't think there have been any leaks and that's just because they've dried. Leaking is where they usually get hot um, and they don't blow the pressure vent and they'll push the rubber plug on the bottom out and it'll leak electrolyte through there. Sometimes the seal's just bad on them as well. But uh, yeah, leaks come from the bottom. This is just, that's usually cap plague uh, when that happens. All right, back together. It's gonna take me a while to get around to restoring this, but I think it's worth doing. It's kind of weird and cool. Okay, now this case. Uh, I don't think I mentioned this yet, but what this is, this is an Atop Z Alien. Um, this came out after Alienware started, and uh, I don't think that it was really trying to be an Alienware clone, because Alienware wasn't really pushing the whole Alien theme that hard, but it kind of was a clone anyway, still. But yeah, there's a fan right there, what looks to be like a 120 millimeter fan for 2004. That's a little odd. So that's kind of cool to see. Um, there's another spot for an 80 millimeter fan right there that you just kind of put it in there. That's kind of cool, no screws needed. Um, there's an accessory kit right here, which I, I don't know what you do with. Uh, these hard drive rails. That two, oh, that is super cool. Okay, so these are hard drive rails that go in there and then optical drive rails. And I guess no one ever used any of them because they're all still there by the looks of it. So I lucked out on that, uh, that I got those. The integrated parts storage, that's kind of a nice feature. It definitely makes us feel like a lot more than just some kind of fly-by-night clone. I don't know what's going on with this over here. That's that's all really confusing. I'll have to try and figure that out. So the card retention thing. Um, but there are a couple of things here that I want to take a look at. So I want to see if that LED still works, if I can get to those legs. It's going to be really difficult to solder into there. Uh, but I would like to get the Counter-Strike logo working again. Um, but there's one thing I want to check first. So this is a side panel. There's a piece of cut 
clear acrylic in there, and they had to actually try in there to cut out the alienizer. There's no acrylic there, so it's actually vented. Um, but when I took this outside, that kind of changed color. So what I've got is a black light, and I want to see if that's UV reactive. Now, that was definitely a thing at this time, definitely for more high-end uh, gear, because it was kind of showy and pointless, but I want to see if that glows. So I'm going to turn off all my lights. And I'm plugging in the black light. I'm gonna turn that on. Oh, oh my gosh. How awesome is that? Seriously, wow. Dude, I don't think this has any UV lights in it right now, but dang. Yeah, that rocks. So that's the kind of thing I was going for with uh, my build, but the power supply cables were the only thing I could find that would do this. That is so, so cool, though. Now, to actually make a side panel like this work, you obviously wouldn't mount like, oh, well, you almost could mount a whole black light in there uh, like that. But the way that you did it were cold cathode light kits like this. So this is actually a UV uh, light kit. This could go in this case, but I think this is going to light up red uh, based on what I've seen. So unfortunately, if I leave it as it is, we probably won't see that light up, which is a real shame. And I already have this set earmarked to go into my 2000 anniversary build for the X-Connect power supply cables. So it's a little unfortunate because that is incredible. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> that is definitely a trait from this era almost exclusively. All right, back over to here though. I wanna see what the condition of this really cool uh, Counter-Strike logo is. So I'm gonna take my multimeter and I'm gonna set it to diode test mode. Uh, and that'll put out enough power to just barely light up the LED if it's still working. Um, just wanna make sure that it's still good in there. There we go. And it is red, like I thought. Uh, so this whole case probably gonna light up red. Uh, that will be a cool trait. You'll see that through the window. It's just a shame that they didn't do UV on this. Oh man, what a lost opportunity. So what I need to do is I can peel this back or off or something. Let me just trim it back. Oh, that is good. I can see in there. Uh, this is something that would be needed. I'm just gonna peel the insulation off on this. In there, I can feel there's a resistor, which there would need to be because you can't run five volts through the LED. Yeah, we can see the resistor leg broke too. That sucks. Uh, so resistor on positive, it's probably like 200 ohm resistor or something there. Uh, counting's hard, so I'm not gonna bother with the rings. We just need to reattach, uh, although the leg is just totally snapped off there. But I'm gonna go ahead and get some new wires and I'm gonna go solder that uh, so that we can utilize this. Okay, so fixed. And I did several things here a little differently than before. Uh, the first one is I put these wires on backwards, but uh, the colors only, so power is correct and this does fire up. So the first thing I had to do there was get the wires attached to the LED, which uh, was really tiny and difficult, which is how I flipped the wire colors around. But uh, I was able to get those tacked on by loading the wires with solder and then just barely pressing them on. Uh, so after that, uh, I got the other end of the red wire solder to what was left of the resistor, which there wasn't much. I could have replaced the resistor, but uh, eh, this was fine. Then I really wanted to make sure that those wires did not break free from the LED. So I put some masking tape over the acrylic and then put a bunch of hot glue around the wires uh, where the LED mounts and then leaned the whole thing forward so it would kind of average out and that helps provide some strain relief. So these wires are gonna break, they're gonna break right there. Um, and that'll be a lot easier to work with. Then uh, I put some shrink tubing back over the resistor part and uh, yeah, that's it. So here we are and I'm going to be putting the wire along the back here for even more strain relief because that whole thing is just kind of ugh. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna remount that now I can take their scotch tape off of here. We can do a little better than that this time. All right, there we go, close enough. Don't wanna bring solvent into this because you can fog up the acrylic. Uh, but I'm gonna remount this with a twist tie because I don't want this uh, <laughs> zip tied in place. So 
and there we are. And I'm going to use that loop in the back to hold up the power cable. And that way it doesn't have to dangle across the whole front of the case. And if I maybe position this just right, yeah, it might be obscured. So hopefully that will look better and we can find a nice position there for this thing. <laughs> Okay, let's go over what all we need to do here. Um, I think everything is clean enough in here. Uh, I'm not seeing any like major dust bunnies, so I don't think this thing was used on the ground. So that's probably good enough as is. Not worry about that for now. Uh, we will have to reconnect the many, 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 matter of fact, might as well put these here, uh, different lights and fans and nonsense uh, up to the power supplies. And uh, I'm thinking maybe hide that behind it. That would look a lot better. We can massively improve on the cable management that this thing previously had. So we're going to try and do that. Um, we have some more up here. Uh, that appears to be for the eyeball lights. So that'll be really cool. I've not seen this thing light up yet. I'm waiting until we know that we're safe to turn it on because I want to have that first experience with you guys here. If that fan is red, that's going to be interesting because I've never seen a red fan before. Actually, I'm kind of curious. Linus and Alex over on LTT just did a video about how a modern fan they were looking at that's just ridiculous has diode backflow protection. These don't. <laughs> so these will light up when you spin them. <laughs> Yay. I'm going to go ahead and mess around with the cables and such in here to figure out what all we have going on. Like the disk drive up there is not connected uh, to anything but audio. And then this one, there's a cable but not connected to the IDE on the other one so yeah I just want to see what's going where in here okay I think uh, I've got an idea of how this is going to go together here so I can go ahead and add a power supply now uh, of course I'm not putting the other one back in so I'm going to be putting in a modern one uh, for now and uh, that will pretty much guarantee that it doesn't have any issues. All right, next up is the motherboard, and I'm gonna remount the CPU cooler here, but refresh the thermal paste, of course, as well. Not sure what was on there before, but uh, it dried out a lot. <laughs> so hopefully I'm making an improvement here. These coolers are always so brutal to the motherboard as well, because they don't mount to anything on the back. There is no back plane, and that's just how these are. They splay out on the board and just like rip it up. It's amazing any of these survive at all, but they were like this back in the day too. It's just, ugh. Okay, so I need to go sideways into the PS2 ports. All right, just get that all nice and secure. All right, the time has come for me to figure out well, this thing is how it works. Um, it's clearly some kind of card retention mechanism. Um, but oh, whoa. Oh, oh, OK. So there's ridges in there and they kind of like ratchet down and then hold the card in. OK. All right, let's, let's give that a shot. So our passively cooled uh, 6800 here going in down so okay so I gotta pinch this push it down and in the card wants to pull it back it doesn't want to line up ah okay interesting in theory I don't like it <laughs> it is very hard to get in there okay this card does have a power connector on it, but I'm gonna leave that disconnected because I suspect it's gonna beep if I don't. And I kind of want to hear that because that is just weird. Matter of fact, I'm even gonna take the PC speaker off because just to be sure, I want to hear it beep. Uh, but I can go ahead and put the rest of the front panel connectors and everything back on here. Okay, I got the two optical drives plugged in, each to their own channel, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna go with a SATA hard drive for this for now. Um, <laughs> and I guess each one's just getting their own channel for maximum performance. Uh, go ahead and plug in the 
24 pin there. And uh, we need to run half of the CPU power connector over to here. Alrighty. Now to power all the things. All right, then I'm gonna bring that down to here. Might as well make it as fancy as I can. I am gonna take advantage of the accessory kit here. I'm gonna grab one of these hard drive mounting rails. Let's see, how do we do this? Okay, so the plastic ones here are for hard drives. These are for optical, I guess. Weird. Okay, so hard drives. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Ooh, that's, that's interesting. Okay, so just, ah, that's simple. I like that. Right there, kind of in the middle. I like it. I, I think that's a good move. Is that it? Are we ready to fire this thing up? I think it's done. Oh, wow. I didn't realize we were barreling down on that. Yeah, that's put together. Okay, I am a little nervous about this because, well, it's the capacitor plague era, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but I'm going to fire this thing up. Remember, that's not plugged in. Oh, that's going to need another Molex power cable when I plug it in. Well, I expect that to beep and complain it doesn't have power, but let's find out. Where's the power button? <laughs> oh, inside. Okay. All right. Well, let's get it power. Remember, there's no PC speaker in there now. Uh, so I can actually put that back now that I know the GPU speaker works. That is so weird. Now let's see what happens. All happy. Beep. I like that. Dude. Oh, yeah. We got to connect a monitor to this and see if it's working. First, though, we got to see if those light eyes light up. Oh, yeah, barely. But that's, you know, that's probably merciful. Soft power down, which tells me the chipset and stuff is working. So I think it's alive. Let's get it hooked up and try it out. All right, uh, I'm going to put this in place of my other XP build here, I guess. Now, <laughs> the smaller computer is the heavier of the two. And this one is absolutely massive. All right, we're ready to try this out. Yes! <laughs> Drives checked, hard drive good. CMOS error, okay, so the battery's dead. I did notice it's actually the original battery. Um, continue. I don't know what's on that hard drive already, so I might be cutting out here. Uh, I'm going to have to install Windows XP back onto the system. Uh, it lives! <laughs> Holy moly, it's got Windows 10 on it, apparently. Okay. Um, we'll let this do what it's going to do, but it's going to get XP back on it. Oh my gosh. I forgot about the display. It shows the temperature. That explains why I saw a thermal couple in there with all the motherboard headers. It can show a temperature on the case? What? Dude, this thing is amazing. I don't think it's going to boot on a Pentium 4, so uh, I am going to do the operating system reinstallation process here, and I will join up back with you in a bit. Now, while I'm at home installing XP and getting some games working, and my cat explores how well I've plugged in the DVI cable, I thought it might be interesting to take a look at something I've only mentioned here a little bit. The Vision Man connection on this machine. I didn't know this when I bought it, but this machine turned out to be a systems integrator build, and the company that made it was called Vision Man. The sticker on top of the computer boasts 11 years of experience, which puts it around 2004 or 2005 based on what little there was archived of their website. It's actually somewhat difficult to piece together information about the history of Vision Man because the Wayback captures of their website are very spotty. 
but it seems to me, based on what I've been able to find, that Vision Man started in the mid or late 90s as a workstation and server building company. In the mid 2000s, possibly 2004, they branched out into gaming computers as well. Now I can still find examples of computers almost exactly like this one around 2004 and 2005, which is where I got the GSP4 3000 series name that I mentioned earlier. There were computers configured in that line that had Pentium 4s and GeForce 6800s. Though I couldn't find an exact configuration like this with the red case and Intel chips. It's difficult to guess what the price would have been because the value of the parts changed as they were released and replaced. So I would guess this computer was somewhere between $900 and $1,200 when it was built. Now, I find this systems integrator history fascinating and it makes me like this computer even more. A lot of people, myself included, looked up to computers from the likes of Alienware and Falcon Northwest as inspirational goals of what computers could be. So to have something from a company like this is just kind of a dream fulfilled, even if it's 18 years late and required a lot of work to get it going. Now in this research, I found out some interesting things about the case as well. It is an Atop Z Alien, and this is not a case that Vision Man put together to try and make it look like a fake Alienware. CyberPower also used this case for some of their customer build computers. It was just a generic case available off the shelf. And what's funny is Alienware actually used cases like this as well. Custom cases for Alienware didn't really come around until their hot rod themed Area 51. Alienware didn't really hype up the alien theme on their systems, so uh, something like this is a bit too on the nose for them. Still though, it's a pretty cool and weird case, and I'm glad that they used it and that it managed to survive this long because it is wild to see in person. Okay, it is now all set up and usable, which was an interesting experience to get it to do everything I wanted, but uh, it's all there and ready to go uh, to the point where I even have the Gigabyte GPU chipset drivers, the Realtek audio, everything is installed on here. Gigabyte actually hosts all the drivers for both the motherboard and the graphics card still, so massive props to them because that is just fantastic. Um, but I've had a couple of weird issues with this thing, uh, mostly related to the optical drives for some reason. They seem really, really slow, uh, and I don't know why. This one is running in PIO mode, and that one is running in UDMA2, so it makes sense why that one's slow, but I installed XP on that one, and it still took like an hour, and I don't know why. But uh, on the positive side, I noticed this. Do you hear that? There's like no fan sound out of this thing at all. My other computer is way, way louder. Now, part of that is because of the passively cooled GPU in there, because it would normally have little tiny fans and those are always the loudest ones. And that kind of really helps a lot here. There's even vent holes right over that, uh, which would make it even louder. So that's kind of cool. On the other hand though, I have concerns that that's actually adequate with the fans that are in here. There's two chassis fans. There's the one little one up there, the 120 in the back, and then I guess there's the big one in the power supply. Now I was going to say there's the small one on the power supply, but actually I guess that power supply is right here, not uh, involved anymore. I don't know. There's no direct air path over that thing, so I'm not sure how well that's doing, but I don't know. I do kind of wish that Vision Man had put the thermal probe for this display anywhere <laughs> rather than just ambient because you can look at your thermostat to figure out what ambient is but yeah that's i don't know i would like and may actually slide it under the heat sink for the graphics card at some point but anyway it's been fine overall no real showstopper problems it so it all still works which means it's time to try the game for this particular computer to try out what the person who built or ordered this thing, I should say, uh, really wanted it for. And uh, this was a whole challenge here because this box copy requires Steam and Steam does not work anymore. So that's a whole thing. And when you install that, it actually installs some compressed, I think GCF files that have to be decompressed by Steam after you log in. So it's like a, it's a whole thing. So I have this, um, alternatively acquired copy uh, of Counter-Strike that will actually work. 
what this means with Steam not launching for this uh, is that we are in the awkward time period now where we can have a physical copy of a game like this that is unusable because it requires online DRM. So I have a less than savory copy here that has been separated from the DRM that will actually still work. So that is a, a better thing, but let's go ahead and see how this runs. I would say it's definitely uh, running very well. All right, now that previous example there was at uh, medium settings at 1280 by 1024. This is high settings at 1280 by 1024, not as optimal. Uh, so there is a limit to how far you can push it, uh, but still, games at this time are developing quite rapidly, so it's not surprising that you can push it too far. I mean, this is really high resolution for these settings. Now, a game I personally played a lot from this era was Need for Speed Carbon. So I did install that on here and that ran not as great. Um, so much so that I ended up installing it on the 20th anniversary PC as well so I could compare the performance. Um, I couldn't get the exact track to load on both of them for some reason, but uh, this felt about right here. So these are at high settings at 1024 by 768, and the 20th anniversary computer does handle a little bit better. Now these systems have almost the exact same configurations. Uh, they are P4s uh, with 6800 GeForce cards in them, the 20th anniversary computers is a GS6800 uh, and it's P4 is 3.4 gigahertz instead of 2.8 and hyper threaded, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, so it's faster in that way, but the performance difference between the Vision Man and the 20th anniversary is about as much as I would expect for the slightly better GPU revision and the more powerful processors. So overall, I do really feel like this thing is keeping up. Now, these are slightly higher end games for this. So let's try out what is this 2002's Warcraft 3. I gotta say, while I'm swapping discs here, Battlestar Carlactica was not as good as I remembered it being. <laughs> Way too much FMV drama and just really sloppy game physics. This, I think we can crank. This game is running really well uh, for full specs. <laughs> so this is a much better experience. And this is two years older than this system, so that kind of makes sense. But it's just kind of a testament to how fast stuff was kind of advancing for games at this point. I mean, computers overall got more powerful, more in the 80s and 90s, but games really evolved very quickly here too. Well, I think that wraps it up for the Vision Man here, built in this awesome Atop Z Alien case. This was a very spur of the moment pickup for me, but I'm glad I was able to get it and bring it back up into usable condition. I will still have to recap that power supply to bring it back to its full glory, but that's a project for a later day. For now, I'm just happy to see this up and running again. So many people from this era, myself included, looked up to the computers made by Alienware or Falcon Northwest as being really awesome examples of what could be done. So to have something kind of like that is really cool to me, and I just want to leave it like it is rather than modify it anymore, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to spend the time to repair that Counter-Strike logo. I think that that is a really cool touch, either that the original owner did or when they ordered it. I'm not quite sure. I don't think I'll ever know, but still, the whole thing, really cool. When I first bought this, I thought there was no way I was gonna get it working. I thought the capacitor plague would have taken out pretty much everything. So the fact that I got to install XP and play games on it is just awesome. So I'm really happy with how this thing turned out and I look forward to having it on tap for the future. 
Well, if you guys enjoyed this video, you may want to subscribe. I know I'm definitely going to be doing more XP stuff in the future, so you might want to stick around for that. If you want to help support the channel, I am on Patreon. But for now, that's it, and I will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.